pretty day here in southern Spain. Oh my goodness, and all I can think about is I want to play with my orchids and Guaracheo Black Comet comes in clutch because we are going to be repotting her because hey, hey, this is what I've been waiting for. Let's just see right there. <laughs> she is going to make my day amazing because I love cleaning up an orchid. I love putting it in my own setup and thank you for being here. I hope that you enjoy this beautiful gorgeous day on my patio while I play with my orchid and then find out what we discover and what we can talk about while we go through the repot. I've been so excited. I've <laughs> I could have just gotten on with it. Totally got carried away. Oh, it is a gorgeous day out today. Now, this orchid, let me show you one more thing. This orchid was starting to show signs of rot on a very, very fresh sheath. So in order to avoid it going over to the pseudobulb and, you know, cross contamination and all that stuff that we don't want, I peeled off a very green sheath. It smelled like cut grass. It was delicious. It was a nice spring fragrance, but I wanted to make sure that the rot wouldn't carry over. And it seems like we've done the job. The bulb is absolutely fine. This brown mark right here, I think that is the remainder of the sheath. I can't really tell. I can't tell the difference with my finger, whether it's on the bulb or an old sheath. But you know what? The bulb looks great and we're going to repot her anyway. Now she came in Coco Choir. Oh, and she came from Portugal. All the way from Portugal, from my friendly neighbor. <laughs> ah, gotta love me. This. Oh, look at this. Not just what we see on the surface, but so much happening inside. Yay! She came from my friendly neighbor, Fernanda Nacimento Orchids and Succulents. Let me get you down a little bit more. Let's see if I can keep this in focus and keep my mess contained. But yeah, look at this. Awesome. I love to see this when you pull an orchid out. Now, guarachias are not necessarily fussy orchids. So I wasn't too concerned if I only had one active root tip. But <laughs> which orchid grower is not greedy? The more, the merrier, right? So I'm going to try and be as careful as possible and let me get into a better position. At least I hope so. While I try to look through the viewfinder and see what I'm doing. <laughs> because as a greedy orchid grower, I don't want to be losing any root tips. As best as possible, if I can avoid it, that would be awesome. That would make my day even better. And I have a 10 day forecast of very mild temperatures only in 10 days am i going to go down to 16 degrees celsius so yeah she's going to be okay because she is going into leca and self-watering no doubt even though we're heading into winter i don't want to be doing too much phing over the winter months so i'm trying to make sure that that workload is limited because there's going to be a major workload anyway to be dealt with which is much more important because every sunny day that i get my orchids get carried outside that takes me an hour and a half in the mornings if i don't get interrupted and of course the same in the evenings and in the evenings I have a timestamp that I have to work with. I start at 5 p.m. with my warm to hot growers, bring them inside. By the time I have done that, I then start with my, you know, more temperature tolerant orchids. Because what I need to avoid is the cold air getting into the grow space as best as possible. So it's a time factor of trying to match <laughs> indoor temperatures with outdoor temperatures so that the orchids don't get shocked by all this moving around. Yeah, so this is why I'm putting her into the setup, even though she's a warm grower or intermediate grower, Lekka having an evaporative cooling effect. Mm -mm -mm. You know, going into winter, it's all a little bit dodgy and uh, 
It's a shame that it's not spring, but, uh, well, it is spring somewhere else, and you guys, love you. <laughs> Envious. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so the evaporative cooling does have me, you know, a little bit concerned. However, I'm not too concerned with this hybrid because they are vigorous and robust, as you can see. Now, the choir is not giving me any issues when moving it off. It's just what's in the choir that I'm trying to be very, very mindful of. And I have a big pot of water next to me. Push comes to shove. We're going to be doing the very, very important task. Highly technical demonstration of slushing. <laughs> For lack of a better term. Oh, I'm so happy to be doing this today. What a beautiful day it is. We'll get rid of that. Exposing more eyes. Relieving the base. And I hope this isn't focused. You know, it's such a beautiful day that I can't actually see my screen. <laughs> uh, enjoying it while it lasts. She says with a very, very, how do you say, remorseful voice. I want to be a hedgehog. I really do. Ever since I moved to Europe from Kenya, I thought, nah, this is not for me. I was born a summer baby. I come to Europe and it's flipping cold. I used to go to the beach and windsurf in, during my birthday in, in Kenya. And now I'm a winter baby. Uh, 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 uh. It doesn't work for me. So I said a long time ago, oh, if I just were a hedgehog or if I had the funds, to live six months in one hemisphere and then move back six months for the next go around and just live spring, summer, spring, summer. <laughs> that would be amazing. Ah, I'm too old for that now. But still, let's get that tub of water and let's go into the technique of sloshing. Or let's see how much we can spray off. I mean, I'm gonna be sloshing anyway. We will be showing that marvelous, marvelous concept of sloshing. But let's see what we can get off and then we can save ourselves a little bit of RO water. Because sloshing doesn't just happen with one go. The effectiveness of sloshing is only proven when you slosh a second time with clean water again. Then you know whether it's good enough. And we can check some roots. I was getting ahead of myself here because I'm so excited. Losing the plot in my mind with a day like this. <laughs> aren't they pretty? Aren't they pretty? And to top it all off, we have a gentle breeze. So whatever water goes into the nooks and crannies down at the base, it's going to be okay. We can see that was a membrane from the sheath. Woohoo! The bulb is clean. Awesome. Okay, I'm gonna clean this up a little bit because we still have some more rinsing to do. I really want to get in there before I take out like five liters of RO water. <laughs> so let's do that. And as with any new orchid, I always assess the root system. I take like a mental note of it. I want to know if it's branching. I want to know if it branches off of an older root. And all these pointers is something I take sort of make a register of in my mind for future reference. And this root system has all the hallmarks of just going, 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 growing, growing, growing. So I don't have to be picky if I do remove viable roots. Now I'm not pedantic about getting all the cocoa choir off the root system. 
My main aim here is to clean her up because she is not going into a pot that I believe this orchid would be able to stay in for two years. I don't have that size pot available to me, so she's going in a pot that uh, <clears throat> we may need to, by the looks of this gorgeous root system and its characteristics, we may need to actually pot her up sometime in 2023. Depending, depending, of course, if she sends out another three new growths and the pot I'm going to put her in starts to look a little bit crowded, um, yeah, oxygen exchange around the roots is important. I would prefer her to be in a pot that looks oversized and ridiculous, seeing as she's going into inorganic media, that would mean I wouldn't have to disturb her for three to four years if that was my prerogative. I didn't get around to it she would be able to handle that but in this case I have a feeling and it's a good feeling that I'm going to be seeing these roots again next year but what I can get out without going too far seeing as I'm dealing with an orchid that has to recover after you know a little bit of repot stress maybe she's got ticklish feet that's something we will find out a little bit later down the road. But um, as much as possible, let's just put it that way. We'll be cutting off the nasty roots that we can see on the surface. And you can see that she's branching all along that root. So we'll take it back to where it's viable. But all this was drying out at the surface. I have a little bit of a concern from what I'm seeing is that the roots, you know, they loved the coca choir. They were like growing up and into it because the orchid itself was a little bit low in the pot. These are not going to be easy to keep contained in my lecker. Just another little bit of information that I need to be mindful of when it comes to potting her up. Now, I do have a dry top layer in my climate, so I can work with that if need be. But, you know, ideally you just want to see the base of the orchid above the media. So we'll be mindful of what we need to do then and there when we get to that. All right, let's slosh. See all this gorgeous RO water, you just want to dive in. It's that kind of a day you think, oh, I'm going to go for a swim. Lovely. Sloshing. <laughs> I suppose the fancy name would be rinsing. I like the word sloshing. It's like you wallow and just enjoy. There is no rhyme or reason. The only thing to be mindful of is not to get the rhizome in too deep. If you're working in an environment where it's a little bit too humid and things don't dry out as quickly. That's not the case here in my climate. Things dry out relatively quickly on a warm day like this and I won't be needing to re-rinse it. You see, if I had gone in straight away without taking off all the choir that I could, this would be a big mess and I would have had to waste more RO water and I don't want to do that. Meanwhile, this water is going to serve its purpose. It's going to go into a pot with a large Benjamini Ficos in it that I have dotted around the patio. They're not mine, but I try to take care of them as best as I can. Whoops, that was a cut where there was a branch on it. Bueno, Hakuna Matata, because you know, branching, vigorous root system. When we make mistakes like that, ha, you just sort of fall back on what you're actually dealing with. And that is awesome. That makes you feel less clumsy, right? Okay, <sighs> let's get her potted up. Methinks this is just perfect. Ooh, love. I have a support, but I don't want to use it. I don't think I need to use it. You see, I do not support my spikes. Now, of course, I'm going to be across with myself if this one grows a beautiful long spike 
Then for presentation purposes, it would be nice to have a support in there, but I don't like the supports, especially if I'm carrying orchids in and out. I'm always wary of, you know, being le klutz and poking my eye out. So all these things are now cruising through my brain and uh, yeah, we're gonna leave the support. But what we're gonna do because this root system is so vigorous is put in small lecker into this pot. This pot is 18 centimeters. I would have loved to gone to 20, even 22, 23 centimeters. I mean, I would have loved to put this orchid up into a pot that looks ridiculously large for it, but it's not possible, c'est pas possible, because I have other orchids that need those pots. And I'm kind of waiting for them to show me that it's go time, you know? I mean, one, I can just do, but <laughs> I wanted to get Guarachia into her new home. And she's going in the middle. But you see what I mean? How this pot could have easily been four times the size as far as I'm concerned. Inorganic media doesn't break down, etc. This orchid came with two bulbs and a teeny tiny new growth starting and then produced two more growths while she was in my collection. That is three new root systems. Three new root systems of this caliber. Uh, this pot, I'm telling you, it's not going to last very long. So we're going to put her in the middle, try to tuck in roots where possible to have them pointing down as best as possible. And we're going to just fill around with Lekka, just from one side, and let the water do the work for us. So she is quite low in the pot still. I can fix that afterwards, but I don't want to be taking her out and doing this again. We'll go around the other side. Just make sure she doesn't move on us while we're trying to keep her in position and fill up with the media. Orchids have this knack of doing it, you know? They're like, eh, no, I want to shift. And I'm like, well, no, I don't think so. <laughs> they are the boss of me. I do admit they are the boss of me. So have to be very, very mindful of those roots that I didn't want at the surface, but I do need to have the lecker settle down a little bit. You can see how they are coming to the top there. Well, that's to be expected. And now I'm going to drain her a little bit prematurely because I want that lecker to settle around the roots and not be too buoyant because I need to make 100% sure as best as possible. Boy, her foliage, hey? I mean, we love orchids with foliage. Let me get you down one floor and then you can see what I'm doing because this gorgeous foliage is just not, uh, <clears throat> yeah. You see what I'm getting at. <laughs> now we are at a position where we are below the canopy. Very helpful. <laughs> also for me, I can see in multiple directions now. The Lekka has been in the sun. It feels so nice and warm. At least the feet are getting into something warm before they get a shock come winter. This will help encourage them to understand, yeah, this is a nice media. I like this media. I'm going to grow well in this media. So I'm just going to keep her in position and tap a little bit. Sorry about this floppy leaf. Everybody wants to be in the viewfinder with this one. Look at me. Look at me. I'm so pretty. Yep, you are. So let's move you around. But we have a task to do. Let's get this off. You see now, if I still had water in here, I could just very gently poke Lekka down into those gaps, you know? Water is really helpful for Lekka to settle without causing too much damage, abrasion to the velamen. But this orchid clearly has roots that we're accustomed to being in something a little bit more easy to manhandle for them. And they liked it. And they're growing up. I don't want that. Before we do a status check, let's give her something to work with. This is calcium and magnesium. I am not adding seaweed. I think it's too late for me in my season to be adding seaweed into this mix. I don't want the hormones to be you know, crash and burn, so to speak. My light levels are going down. I don't have that high light anymore to push any more hormones into this orchid. She's already well on her way to doing what she would do anyway, 
roots are growing, calcium and magnesium is plenty fine. So let's do a status check. This was the root that we saw before the repot. That's wonderful. I'm a little bit low here, but that's okay. My dry top layer is usually around two centimeters, so that's gonna be fine. Even the next new growth that may come out here is gonna be fine. I think that we've pretty much nailed it. <laughs> this root back here was on the surface anyway. We can see that because it's got a little bit of algae on it. So yeah, Guarachia Black Comet. She has three sheaths. Now, I am not expecting any blooms from this one, seeing as she's not been in my collection a whole season, including the repot, including what she's going to be faced with come winter, but she's in the pot. I've checked another one off the list and we are good to go. That didn't take too long, but I certainly appreciated being able to do this without having cold feet. And thank you so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed a little bit of the Spanish sunshine, little repot, musings of a repot nut, <laughs> all that good stuff when it comes to orchids. Let me know what you think. Thank you so much for watching. Have a beautiful day on one condition, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.